going. Okay, and we have liftoff. Uh, thank you very much for attending today. This is our weekly charting analysis webinar. My name is Jasper Lawler, talking about <laughs> CMC markets. Um, gonna, as you can see, got the risk warning on the screen here. Just cruising through that. And then we will get stuck into some of the, the major markets that, uh, that are popular to trade with, with CMC markets. And of course, at any point, if you had uh, any other markets you wanted me to have a look at and uh, had any questions on or just anything in general, please send a uh, message either to the group or just you can send it directly to myself in case you wanted to hide who you were. Um, obviously, the, the big event that caused some fireworks last week, and I hope some of you were on the, on the right side of that, uh, was the, uh, the non-farm payrolls. That came in massively under expectations, and so the result was a, a collapse in the dollar, good rally in commodities, especially gold, and, uh, and US stock markets dropped off pretty sharply initially after that jobs report, but then pretty much rebounded, and as of at the moment, we've pretty much retraced most of those losses. Now, I think what that probably boils down to is that, obviously, it was 38,000 jobs created, and we're expecting 160,000. Um, there was a there was a Verizon strike, accounted for about 37,000. So you know, but still, you're looking at around 70 or thousand jobs created, um, and uh, that's obviously way beneath expectations. Even the the lowest expectations came nowhere close to that. Um, the previous month also got revised lower. So basically, the the three-month average is a lot less than it was prior to Friday. And it's that lo slightly longer-term stretch of, of data that the Fed tends to look at when deciding whether to raise rates. So, you know, in, you know, on, on the face value, the Fed not raising rates is, is a good thing for stock markets. Um, and so what we were looking for today, and I think why the, the markets have retraced, those initial sort of knee-jerk reaction losses, stocks that is, is we've got a speech from Yellen today, and what we're looking to see is whether she changes her tone a little bit um, about when the Fed is likely to raise rates. She she previously said um, that a, a rate hike in the coming months is likely, and she's probably going to say something pretty similar here, but I think she may caution it a little bit, and I'm sure in the back of her mind, I think she's going to probably leave July open as a possible place for the Fed to, to raise rates. The July meeting, that is. I think June is pretty much off the table. Uh, but I think probably in the back of her mind, um, like a lot of the other Fed members, they're probably thinking actually September would be the other time to raise rates. And it's all pretty conditional on the data. And if this can, if this trend of weaker data continues, you know, September could easily not happen. So so that that's a sort of weaker weaker dollar story, and it's just unwinding a bit more of this strong dollar that we've had over the past few years. No, I mean towards the end, I think. I think a lot uh, of people less. So yeah. that's that's the dollar we're talking about here. But uh, let's let's just you know we talked a bit about US stocks there. So let's let's kick off in some traditional fashion. I'll try to do this. Yeah, US, the US there, the Dow Jones in the US. This is zoomed in a bit. It's still a daily chart, which uh, tends to be my main focus. Yeah, yeah. I think I left it off. And uh, yeah, you know, what we were looking at was a potential head and shoulders pattern here that still vaguely could come off. Uh, but we also had this declining trend line, which um, which we referenced in last week's uh, webinar. Valued up to the previous high, came down, touched the trend line nicely. A few long tail. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, just sneezing there. Um, the old hay fever kicking in. <clears throat> We've had three days of long, can of long tailed candlestick patterns, and uh, and now we're moving back up, possibly to to rechallenge that that peak. And so what you'd be looking at here is basically this was the this was the correction broken out of the correction, came to the old high test, and then moved up to the peaks again. That that's my default assumption as to what's happening here, and that obviously negates. The, uh, the head and shoulders pattern. We've pretty much already 
you know, you know, you know, ruined this left, uh, this right hand shoulder. But a move up through this uh, 17, 930 area would pretty much cancel our pattern. Um, in general, though, still kind of sideways choppy markets. And I think if we do move towards the top of this range in near the 18, 150 type area, then it's you know, the highest probability trades when you're not in a trend is to sell the top of the range and buy the bottom of the range. Um, obviously, we can break out, but we're very close to record highs, as I've sort of symbolized by this, this shaded area up here. This is our record high from last year. So, you know, there's some big old resistance for us to have to get through for that rally to have much legs beyond the peak that we reached in April. So you've got to imagine that there's a strong likelihood, even if we take out that high, that we're going to roll over somewhere within that shaded zone. Now there's similar looking, uh, you know, the US markets are certainly by far outperforming, uh, but there's similar looking setups in the, the other markets too. So let's just go to the UK, uh, which by the by is doing the best out of all the European indices today, uh, largely off the back of the fact that uh, the mining companies are doing well. You can see them listed up here. Put them at the top of my list here uh, just because they do tend to drive the FTSE one way or the other. This, today it's to the upside. And just the logic there being that um, the dollar goes down, that commodities are denominated in dollars, commodities go up, and uh, miners if you mine those commodities go up too. So that's the kind of simplistic logic there as to why miners going up. You know, that's a questionable long-term scenario because obviously if the US economy does peter, peter out, um, that doesn't bode well for the global economy and doesn't bode well for global demand for commodities. So here, this is, uh, if I just push this out a bit, this is the um, UK 100. Similar long-term situation here, where we've broken out of this downtrend, we've come back to the previous peaks, we've come back, retested the, the broken trend line, and we're pushing higher. Now, the, the, the bullish development that we had uh, the week before last was that we pushed out of this kind of tight range we're in, we pushed out, and we rolled back over, we retested the 200-day moving average, as well as vaguely the top of that tight range that we're in, and we're pushing higher again. So a bit like that US 30, where we had the little dip, we're coming back to the peaks again. Um, you know, this would be equivalent uh, to the 18,150 in the US 30. You know, here it's about more, more like the 6,400 to 6,430 in the UK 100. Um, so that kind of correlation between global, in, um, global indices pretty well intact at the moment. And so, again, even though we're in a sort of range-bound environment generally, you know, it you know, does make trading trickier when you're in a range, because uh, obviously we can just kind of chop around inside that range, and it's um, certainly difficult, more difficult to call when we're in a more defined trend. But it looks like we've had a correction, tried to break through that uh, 6,050 kind of support that we banged against multiple times, failed to do so, come up, found support at 200 day moving average, and to me the logic would be again to push up to that, um, that peak from April. <coughs> jump over to Germany. Similar looking thing. Yeah, it's basically, can you pay uh, again the 200 day moving average? We had a fairly tight range that we're in. We broke out to the top side, came round. As we currently stand, we're testing the 200 day moving average and this kind of long standing pivot that seems to have acted a number of times now. You know, not every time it breaks, obviously, um, but has been a um, an important sort of um, buy and selling location for the most part of this year. So that's that's a sort of 10, 100 kind of area in, in the Germany 30, at the moment supporting the price. So again, I think my default assumption here is that we've got this kind of rising wedge pattern. Uh, that actually is more bearish, but still the fact that we've broken out, retested the former resistance, now turned support, to me suggests we're pushing up to the, the highs next. Um, if we break through these supports, it's pretty clear cut that 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 assumption, that scenario that I'm painting here of the bounce, is obviously not happening, 
and then we've got a we've got a question why, and um, we've got to revisit why we'd be retesting this bottom trend line, having not pushed up to the highs again. Um, that that would be risking a scenario of a, a lower low being put in. But you've got to have your base case scenario, and um, if the, the risk reward makes sense, you got to go for it. So obviously we're talking about um, about Yellen specifically talking today. That's at uh, five thirty uh, British Summer Time, by the way, uh, this evening. So obviously after our markets close. So if there is any fireworks to be had, we'll be seeing it at tomorrow's open. I suspect there won't be, um, but it's 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 one of those things where we know the event's happening. It's unlikely to be anything special, particularly said. But based on what she does say, that's how people are going to position themselves um, when they get their price levels that they're looking for one way or the other in, in the coming week or so. And obviously bearing in mind next week, we've got the, got the Fed meeting. So, um, you know, talking about the, the LM, but otherwise, a, f a few data points, but not not much this week. Nothing compared to last week, where we had the ECB and OPEC and, 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 uh, and a lot of other you know, non-farm payrolls. Tuesday we've got the the RBA. Wednesday we've got UK manufacturing, uh, China tra trade data on Wednesday too. Uh, China's CPI PPI later in the week, uh, but that's about it. Uh, not even much in the way of earnings. Kind of earnings season's wound down now, pretty much. Uh, got say, Sainsbury's sales data, which could push around the, the supermarkets uh, later this week. No, it's live streaming. Got it. So we jump straight to the euro against the US dollar. Um, yeah, you've got a again, tricky environment. Um, longer term, we're in this range, and uh, we came down from the top of the range. Um, you know, I've just got this drawn in because I think it kind of highlights it both. We've got the false break out there, pen back into the range. We've got the false break on the downside. Um, just want to see what I said last time. Okay, well, actually, yeah, I kind of caught it about right there when it was when it was pushing into that one one forty. Sort of saying, well, actually, yeah, we're into the oversold area on the RSI. We're approaching it at least. Um, chance of a near-term bottom, and that's kind of what, kind of what happened in the end. We basically we've had a false break to the top side, and now we've had a false break to the bottom side, and um, obviously just a massive move lower. After that kind of momentum higher, you know, you typically don't want to be on the other side of that. We could definitely pull back fairly substantially, back even down to the, uh, back into where we broke out at the sort of 1, 2, 20 area. I don't suspect we'll get that far. Uh, I suspect we're probably going to keep pushing up. Uh, by the by, though, I mean, we pushed right through the bottom of this highlighted box. Ahead, but, um, you know, this is, this is the kind of area in which the market would roll over again if this downtrend into the lower into the range would continue. Very, you know, we've had this strong move. Uh, it's not to say that it has to continue, though. Um, it's, uh, you know, you can certainly, it's almost, you know, looking back at the previous strong moves that we had, it's almost a, um, a precursor. Not every time to a bit of a pullback. You have these really big moves. Not in this case. Here, two moves lower. That big move there. I think the fact that we've held the 200-day moving average to me is probably the um, decisive factor here that says we're, we're up to challenge the highs again. And I suppose. Again, back to correlations. If you're, if you believe that the, the stocks are going to rebound up to the, uh, the April highs again, you probably in sync with that and the euro is going to do the same. Switch over to cable. This is on the more interesting side, and we don't have to talk so much about the Fed all the time. Uh, obviously, we're our own situation in the UK with, um, with Brexit and situation, um, quite a remarkable turnaround. Um, I actually had last week off. Um, just in the space of that week, a number of polls have come out in favour, or including today, in favour of uh, the, the, uh, the campaign to, to leave. 
So uh, people on basically what's happening is that people on the sidelines are clearly weighing up the debate all this time, saying they don't know. The don't knows have decreased in numbers, and they've all shifted to the to lead camp. Um, you know, so it's just politics really to speculate why that's happening. Um, you know, my suspicion just that. Uh, all these big institutions have come out talking about the economic risks, but just not enough said really about the, um, the democratic arguments and um, uh, the other side of the coin for um, uh, kind of more like the political side rather than the economic side. Uh, that's uh, and that's the, you know, immigration, obviously. Uh, that, those kind of political issues are coming more to the forefront, which is more supportive of exiting than the economic argument that you know the loss of confidence means we you know the economy could have go into a tailspin if we need. Um, so net result uh, is that you know the default scenario that we've been dealing with uh, since the start of the year, well since December obviously we had that first massive drop is that um, the that's where higher the chance that. of an exit well, means uh, a you know, downside risk to the pound. So that's, that's and so we tried to break out a couple of times above 147, um, but we're basically in a range now. And so we also no, tried I mean, to break out, kind of didn't quite happen. Um, it's not in any shape or support. I think most people will probably agree it's more likely we vote to remain um, just as a safety vote. I say this every week. Um, <laughs> But it's not quite such a foregone conclusion as it seemed like a couple of weeks ago now, no. and we're back into the range. Um, we can put the we're we're basically challenging this old support it's here, but um, this, this broken trend line has worked quite well, and uh, my suspicion is that this works quite well with the um, historical low. I think we could be heading back down to 142 and change. Um, you know, but it's all fairly pole dependent, and again, we're in a range. Um, poll says one thing, uh, we're back here, you know, uh, poll is favourable to Brexit, we're down, another poll comes out saying, we, you know, the Remain camp ahead, you know, we're higher, so it's tough, but uh, my suspicion is that we're probably yeah, drifting yeah. down to the bottom of the range, we're basically range bound, and again, just that same old, better to sell in the top half of the range, buy in the bottom half of the range. At this point, we're kind of mid-range, um, so it's a trickier trade, you basically be betting on a continuation of the move down to the bottom of the range but it's, it's just going to be choppy on the way there so you kind of have to have the deeper pockets larger stop losses to, to go for that kind of trade yen also been a, an interesting one here so we highlighted this area of resistance in last week's uh well, that wasn't last week the week before's uh, webinar and uh, we basically got a false break, ran into that fairly solid support at 111 and just rolled over massively and we're, we're, we're back down at the lows now. And so my sense here is though that we, we had a good strong bounce off that last low, we almost made a new high, we didn't. Um, yeah, and my suspicion is that we could probably go down to challenge and our highlighted level was 105.30 we mentioned we mentioned in a couple of videos now which was this this pivotal point here from the, the peak in 2013 and that low in 2014 you know i suspect that we dip down test that uh, and then bounce back up into uh, a range again so that's that's if you're buying at the low it's counter trade uh, it's counter trend but i think especially if we got another drop in our side down to 23, 70, 24, um, even 30, just an, uh, just an oversold level um, in combination with hitting that support. It's counter trend, but I think it's it's more, uh, it's high probability than the most counter trend trades. I think we're, we're heading into a range now after that steep sell off. By the by, I, I still tend to think that we're headed to 100, but I just don't think it's happening quite yet. I think 105 is yeah, pretty much holds. Um, so let's, let's move on to crude. The initial reaction was a sell-off in oil to the um, the, the non-farm payroll result on Friday, but again, um, 
it, 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 it's kind of bounced back since because again that same argument that supported commodities um, suggests that uh, you know weaker dollar good good for oil in general so we're basically trying you can see here just by the um, we've got above a 50 a couple of times on our charts here but we just haven't closed above 50 on the cash rate we've had it um, bounced off it perfectly we've had a little spike above close below spike above close below and we're probably you know there's a good chance we can try it again today to push above 50 but the, the difference maker will be when we get that close above the risk here is that we've got some bearish divergence look at this RSI slipping down while the price is making higher highs it's, it's, it's higher highs but it's struggling to even make a close below 50, uh, above 50 and, and this RSI is, is gradually drifting down um, I, you know, it's tricky to trade off the um, such a strong bullish trend and divergence by itself, but in and around 50, you know, it's it's um, you know, it's a big round number. A lot of people paying attention to it. There's a good chance it ends up being the top somewhere in that area. If you're looking for a bit of extra confirmation before, you know, rather than just calling the top out right at 50. You know, if you're looking for a bit of a breakdown first to confirm the idea, then I think this rising trend line here in the price would be the kind of clue you want. Um, equally, this this rising trend line in the in the RSI, which you can either use this previous low, or you know maybe maybe ideal, maybe a bit safer, slightly lower, as these two peaks in the RSI here break down through both of those. You know, I think that opens us up. Firstly, back down to this quite nice pivot area of 46. We could actually get a bounce from there, uh, but perhaps even back down to, to 40, 43.50, um, which would, again, sort of put us, we've been in a nice trend for a while. And we're pretty overdue, just drifting back into a, a sort of rate, more stable range. And I think that there are a lot of calls out there for the oil price to settle into a new range between 40 and 50. So they, those projections may become reality in the too distant future. Gold, as I mentioned, was one of the um, the more interesting moves. Um, obviously, anything dollar related was pretty good on Friday, but um, here in, um, in gold, we basically based off this last run lower, we pulled back fifty percent. So fifty percent and this big reaction low here on the nineteenth of May is basically where we've, where we've stored out on this massive move higher on Friday. Um, so there is this rising channel which we push back into now, uh, but there's still risks. Um, yeah. There's the rising channel which, which still, to me, the fact that it's broken it poses some bearish risks. But if you ignore this channel completely. If you cut it, if you you know, sometimes you do paralysis by analysis. You do too much. If you just cut it out, and again, simplistically, we're in a trading range, aren't we? And so, you know, basically, this has been buy near the bottom of the range trade, basically. Um, you know, this is the safest definition of the bottom of the range down at uh, one one ninety, and uh, we've do, we've rebounded just above that. Basically, basically the one two hundred. You know, if you just had a simple buy order down at the round number, you'd done done pretty nicely uh, off this trade so far. With you know the fifty percent retracement, but uh, also not far off just the midpoint of the range. Which, if you are buying at the bottom of the range, the more conservative first target is the midpoint of the range. The more aggressive target, obviously, is the the other end of the range. I've uh, got a question here, do I think oil will reach 80 by the end of the year? Um, I don't, uh, well, I mean, you know, it's in a strong trend right now, and I don't think it's an unreasonable question, but I tend to think we're, we're going to roll over and um, and stick in a lower range, is, is my default assumption here. Um, the, the supportive factor for, for oil push going that high I think would be if the Fed completely held off and the dollar weakened. Uh, but I think the sort of unsupportive idea for that is that the global growth risk, if the Fed decides not to to tighten, that bodes well for the well, bodes badly for the global economy. And also, just more specifically, on the supply and demand for oil. Um, you know, maybe I should put up 
WTI for this, but uh, <coughs> just in terms of US crude, um, I think what's hap what's going to happen is that as we approach 50, we've already started to see it, by the way, in terms of the rig count. We saw this, but the first rise in the rig count in, I think it was 11 weeks last week. So basically, as oil price gets higher, uh, US shale producers come back in and start producing more oil. And that result is that we get more a bigger supply of oil. Uh, we had the OPEC meeting last week. They're not going to stop pumping at record levels. Record levels from OPEC. US shale comes back online at, at, at higher prices. Means eventually that supply glut is still there. And if you base on the US jobs numbers, slightly weaker data from China, the demand is not really there either. So I would say there's probably more risks to the downside uh, than there is to the upside there. I hope that makes sense. So I think uh, I'm about done here. I, I didn't see any other questions. Um, oh, hold on. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Dollar CAD. Yeah, let's have a look at that. <clears throat> Obviously, very much related to the um, to the oil trade, and at the moment, slightly more dominated by the move in the dollar. By the by, this is actually quite an interesting pattern here. I literally just spotted that look at you, but we've got basically got head and shoulders in the RSI here. And we've had a failed, um, you know, lower low here, failure to make a new peak in this little retracement. We're heading down to the lows here. So perhaps some, some short term weakness involved. Um, you know, we've had a break of a only a two point trend line. Looks like we're up, we're up into trying to test that trend line at the moment. Um, but a big bearish engulfing candle, um, failure to make a new high, um, you know, kind of coming off the top of the range, and obviously um, slightly more dovish yelling today, perhaps. And, uh, and a weak jobs report is, is bad for the dollar. Um, supportive of the CAD would be higher oil prices. And at the moment, the, you know, the trend is still higher in oil. Um, we haven't, now I'm talking about the downside risks to 50, but we've not actually had that top in place yet. Um, you know, I was talking about the, those, those kind of trend lines that we could use as come confirmation that the trend is starting to turn lower. Um, so maybe at that point, this trade would be slightly less intuitive because the CAD strength wouldn't be there um, if oil rolls over. Uh, but nonetheless, the, you know, the dollar's the main driver, so we've got weak dollar driving forward and a, and a bit of a, a fairly distinct pattern here. A um, little bit of a bounce back towards the 130 mark, um, and, and we could see some renewed weakness in this dollar cad. I think short term weakness in dollar cad looks like. Yeah, hope that helps. Okay, done and done. Thank you very much for attending today. Uh, very much appreciate your attendance. Um, good luck with the trading, and uh, we'll talk hey. again this time next week. Cheers, Jasper Lawler, signing out.